The Michigan State Apparel is showing up in the mail. One for me, one for my kids. morning thanks for the shirt al we are back up at the field where we finished last night we're gonna finish up the last 40 or 50 acres whatever we've got left here and uh see if we can't move on to the next one sounds like we'll be able to get anhydrous today so that's good let's get started oil check looks good We, uh, we gotta do something about these windows before we get started. They're bad. That isn't perfect, but uh, wow, you can actually see out the windows now. Cool. All right, now we're ready to go. Time for our first paint change of the morning, and check it out. We got a big paint. I don't have to change it so much, so that should be enough to finish this field, which is good. Uh, yeah, let's get it done. Big tank means I'll be able to finish this back here without running out. Small tank wasn't going to be enough. So, uh, yeah, that's good. It means I don't have to come up here and change tanks again and then drive back to the back. Okay, see all these crooked rows here? Probably not very well now. See them over there? Yeah, Ryland and Brayson were riding with me when I planted that. Somebody turned the wheel on the tractor, the steering wheel, and made me go crooked. All right, well, this is the last half a pass here for this triangle. I've got one more pass to make it up to the road, and then we're done in this field. Fortunately, my tank is about empty, and I don't know if we're going to make it or not, but we're going to try. Well, we made it. All right, so this field is done. Click the button, and you can see the map filled in there. And uh, how many acres did we do? 168. So I know I've told you there's 175 in this field, but we got all those irrigation lanes and some end rows and stuff that uh, don't get done. So anyway, folding up, there's 13-ish uh, acres up there on the corner that we've got to do. And then uh, we'll head back towards some other farms by the farm. Okay guys, I am failing at my job here as a uh, YouTube, uh, ag YouTuber. Um, the whole point of me making these videos is to kind of show you what we do every day and why we do it, right? So obviously I've been doing anhydrous the last few days, and then today I get a comment about how it looks super safe that we're doing something that requires a gas mask, and I realize that I have failed to explain it and talk about it very much. So we're gonna attempt that now. I'm not very good at putting these words together all the time. So, uh, anhydrous, anhydrous ammonia, NH3 is what the analysis is on it. It is a widely used and safe agricultural fertilizer. It's nitrogen. It is 82% nitrogen. Now that may sound scary, but you realize that 78% of the air that you breathe is nitrogen nitrogen okay the reason that i wear a gas mask and gloves is over an abundance of caution um really what i would need is is goggles eye protection and the gloves the the gas mask portion of it is really just a convenience thing for me because yeah it's an inhalation hazard as a gas um it binds to water. It binds to moist surfaces. Well, the inside of my mouth and lungs and eyes are moist surfaces that it would burn if it came in contact with. That said, as soon as I put it in the soil, it binds 
to the water in the soil <coughs> excuse me and it becomes nitrogen tied to the soil nitrates it's not it, it is it is not harmful in any way shape or form to the corn much less to the kernels of the grain that you, we harvest in the fall like you guys see those corn plants they're like four or five inches tall right how can anything that I'm doing now possibly affect the grain in a negative way that won't even start forming until July when it pollinates? Yeah. Um, nitrogen, uh, uh, anhydrous fertilizer began being used in 1932. I looked it up. That was the first time it was used. So a lot of times people think we should go back to farming the way they did in the 50s or we like to say that. You know, technology advances in agriculture look down upon uh, much more than any other industry out there. You, you know, people have this nostalgic vision of farms where they want us to farm like their great grandfather did in the 50s, and uh, we're not allowed to have any technological advances. Well, even anhydrous was around in the 50s, so uh, I don't know. I don't know what what we're supposed to do, but we use fertilizer to make the corn grow. Without nitrogen, this corn would not grow hardly at all. In fact. In my corn plot that we did yesterday, I left a strip with no added nitrogen to it. You guys can watch it all summer long and how terrible that corn is going to look. There's a reason that we use this stuff and it's not because we're trying to kill everybody on the planet and poison their food. It's, it's for productivity purposes. It's so that we can grow the food that the world needs. And uh, you know, on top of that, this is corn. Do you know how much corn makes it directly into the food supply? I don't, but it's a very small number. A third of the corn in this country is used to make ethanol. A third of it is used to make, or for it goes for livestock feed or more, fed to cattle and pigs and chickens. And about a third of it, not quite a third, is for export markets, but that varies depending on the year. There's, there's very little that's used for actual food production. And most of the time when it is used for actual food production, it's, uh, uh, it's especially corn of some sort, whether it's a, a waxy or a non-GMO or a blue corn that they use to make the blue tortilla chips or um, you know the food processors that are making Doritos and cornflakes pretty tightly control where their grain is coming from. And so if there are certain ways that they want it grown, they're gonna make sure that they do that, that their farmers do that, but they pay a premium for it. Uh, we're growing commodity number two yellow corn. It goes to the open market to either get made into ethanol or livestock feed. That's what this is for. So I, I don't know how to ease the fears or, or misconceptions about, you know, anhydrous and why we're doing it and make you feel better about that. If there's something I can explain, please let me know and I will do my best. All right, we finished that field up there and I stopped back at the farm for some fuel here. And uh, while I'm uh, fueling up, I've got a couple of knives we're gonna change. So I'll show you that here real quick. All right, so this is a knife. This is what runs through the soil and uh, applies the anhydrous. It's on, mounted on a shank up here and uh, it's got this hose attached to it. Everything gets dirty and the dirt sticks to it because it gets wet from the condensation. It's these uh, anhydrous as it's coming through these tubes it's expanding and it's uh, absorbing heat making everything cold. Then the water accumulates on it. Whatever. So this bolt, this is uh, bolted onto this shank here. Got these uh, uh, this tube that runs down the back of it. Let me show you a new one. So this is a new one. The tube on the back there runs down the back side and then there's a holes in the side of it there where the anhydrous then shoots out, right? Um, this one here is getting worn pretty good. I don't know how well you guys can see this side here, but there's kind of a little protector on this, this side that's welded on there to protect the tube. And on this one, this side, it's gone. We're starting to wear into that tube pretty good. So we're gonna go ahead and replace it. First thing we gotta do is take the uh, clamp off, 
hose clamp that's uh, holding the hose on the tube and then hopefully be able to pull this tube off yeah. there and then it's just uh, two bolts there you can see them side by side a lot of wear in this area and on the foot down here I don't know if I can make them stay like this but then there's the back side and you can see how that's uh, worn uh, that, uh, sides of the tube there so anyway there's a couple of more of them that we're gonna replace but that's uh, what we're doing so first one bolt and then you just slide it in the hole this one goes in the bottom you gotta get it lined up put the washers and nuts on a good cordless impact makes that job go a lot faster stick our tube back on put our clamp down and we just tighten it up we do have a couple of different styles of knives that we're running uh, that one that I just showed you is kind of what we've always run and, and what we normally do uh, this one here is kind of a little bit different and we're something we're trying where it's got that uh, dog leg to the front on it with a big uh, beaver tail here trying to get it to seal a little bit better I think they do work a little bit better but we've got a bunch of these ones that we got to use up so and then you'll see this one here is the same style as that one but it's got two tubes on it so it's got the regular line here and then a big line this is the vapor line that's uh, coming off the cooler and so we put that one on there it doesn't doesn't do a whole lot uh, or not a whole lot comes out of that vapor tube but it, it's uh, helps to keep it cool so that it's liquid form for the the flow meter and everything else to distribute it to the rest of the rows I guess so uh, this one here it's wearing through there but that one's just barely through that guard I'm gonna let that one keep going for a little bit and we'll let it wear and change it later all right we're back in that field around my uh, seed warehouse where we ran out around short past and a half yesterday so I'm going to finish that, and then we're jumping to the field right over there so we don't have to fold up, and uh, we'll just keep going across that. I was just changing tanks here, guys, and the anhydrous bar pooped on me. Gross. So that's what happens when you rub up against dirty, muddy hoses. So I haven't filmed much while I've been in this field, um, but I was making some really cool GoPro footage. I had a few different spots on the bar that I put my GoPro... Then I mounted it on the back of the tractor and I just looked to go and get it and it's gone. Crap. So somewhere out here in this field is a GoPro with some pretty good footage on it. Uh, yeah. Let's see if I can find it. I don't know. Um, yeah. Anyway, I, I gotta change tanks first here. Well, when I got out to change that tank, found a horseshoe and not just any horseshoe this horseshoe is made out of aluminum I've never seen that before but it's got nails in it like it was an actual used horseshoe and then I found my camera turns out it just fell down on the back of the tractor and it wasn't where I left it I couldn't see it from inside the cab and I got I looked and there it was so good news you're gonna get some GoPro footage Let okay we finished this field. There was uh, a little over 46 acres here. We've got like 110 almost on the day already, and it's only 3 o'clock. So we're doing really good here. Um, we're going to jump across the road, do this little 9 acres that's around Phil's house. And uh, then there's another know, 36, I think, down the road that's the next field. So, oh well. I seem to be having issues with my 2630. None of the buttons want to push. It's not locked up because it was counting down and following me and the acres are right. So we're going to restart the tractor and see if that helps. I don't know what happened. It just quit working all of a sudden. Good news. A restart seems to have fixed it. I don't know what caused that. But I'm glad it was that fix, easy of a fix. I'm pretty sure this is the display that I had sent in this winter um, because there was a bubble in the touch screen. So I don't know. Maybe there's a uh, maybe there's a warranty even if it wasn't. 
fix, do this, yeah, whatever. Anyway, we're good. I knew one of these times when I said things were going well, things would start breaking. I was right. That's not good. This is what happens when the bolt don't break fast enough. The shank did. And it's buried in there. Broke it. Right there. And then it pulled our hoses apart. Yeah. Fun, fun. So we got to get that out. We got to take this off. We got to take this apart, which means taking this spring off. There's a bolt up under there that's got to come out. Take the broken shank out, get a new one, put it all back together. This is going to take me a minute. Oh, man. All right, I don't have any of these shanks here. Phil is at the fertilizer plant, so he's uh, a ways away. Um, so I'm going to just fold up and go back to the farm because we're just down the road. Uh, it's amazing how much stuff you collect in that far from the road to here. I don't know what that is. And look at this rock we got wedged in there. Good grief. All right, um, I got the broken piece out. The closing wheels are off there. We gotta go find a new one here, but I had to take the spring off the front. Uh, yeah, I'll show it to you as what goes back together, kinda. We have quite the uh, anhydrous parts uh, stockpile over here. Right here is what we need. So this slides through there, and then that bolt uh, there goes through the hole in the end of that, so we gotta lift that bolt up. But first, we have to slide that assembly onto this and then try and do it all. Yeah, it's, it's, kind, of a, it's kind of a hassle. Um, I'm not gonna be able to film it, but I'll show you. Okay, so this U-bolt's on there. I gotta tighten that up yet. It's still loose, but I gotta get it exactly where I want it. Uh, we got that slid through there in this bolt and I've got to tighten that bolt up and then there's a, a set screw here that we've got to also tighten up and then we can put our spring back in. Okay, those are tight. Now our spring assembly goes on there and this is a kind of a double coil spring. Sets on here. And this piece goes on top. And then this big long bolt comes up from the bottom. Oh, two hands, like so. And that way when, uh, it's it's the protection, it gives this shank some give. So when you push back on the shank, you know, the force of the ground pushes back if you hit a rock or something, it pulls down on this, which compresses that spring. And yeah, most of the time it keeps stuff from breaking, not always. So the good news is um, my hose clamp held really well on that shank that, or that knife that I just took it off from. The bad news is it holds so well it stretched it out and now we have to figure out what we're going to do about hose because, yeah, that ain't no good. And it broke it off way back here. <sighs> so do I splice it? Or do I gotta go all the way back to the distributor and replace that hose? I don't know. I decided just to replace it back to the distributor. So it's this hose right there. Um, plus this way I can lay the hose out. All right, I've got all the hoses back on. Now the question is, will it fold without pinching or stretching a hose? Looks like it's gonna work okay. So we'll head back to the field. For all of you that were wondering where all the tar on our equipment came from last winter when we were cleaning stuff up in the shop, it's from this road on days like today. Well, I'm working on the last pass in these next couple of fields here. I'm sorry, I haven't filmed much. It's kind of boring. It's the same thing over and over again here after a while, but uh, we're up to almost 150 acres on the day. Uh, 
got uh, plenty of tanks apparently. They set a bunch out for us today. They must have got their trucks in that they said they were going to get. So uh, we should have enough anhydrous to run most of the day tomorrow, which is great. We'll get stuff done. We'll keep moving. Um, I am going to go to the next field tonight, run off another tank or two, and uh, see how far we get. Um, this next field is the one where we started uh, replant. I wonder if our replant court's coming up yet. That was on Monday, today's Saturday. Gotta be getting close, I bet. Well, I'm just getting started in this next field. This is the first time I've had this happen to me this year. Hose come off. Which, no big deal, right? Just put it back on. Problem is, my tube is plugged up with dirt. So I gotta take that uh, knife off and see if I can't find a wire or something to stick in there and clean it out. And then uh, we can put it back on. And if not, I'll just replace it with a new one and we'll clean it out and we'll use that one later. We got some beautiful looking corn across here. It's really dusty. Can't hardly see anything behind me. I don't want to say it, but we almost could use a rain, but I didn't say that. I had to stop and get out and uh, change a bolt, but I was looking while I was out here. This is some of the stuff that we replanted. Check this out. Those are, uh, those are plants that we planted on Monday. That's incredible. I mean, these ones are already unrolling. They were probably spiking through at least yesterday, yesterday morning. And, uh, yeah, yesterday was Friday, five days. That's good. Especially considering the corn when we planted it the first time took three weeks to come up. Yeah, that's why this stuff that we replanted, it's late, it's behind. We've definitely lost some heat units, but uh, it will catch up fast and it won't be three weeks behind. So, it's as good as we can hope for. All right, I just... Uh, Switch tanks. A big tank again, so that's good. We've got 29 acres left in this field. I don't know if this tank will do it or not. It's going to be real close. I have a feeling we're going to end up an acre or two short. But it'll be close. Um, bugs are getting nasty. Man, I'll go put this uh, tank in that grass strip over there. And, uh, whew, yeah, that was changing quick. I don't have any bug spray with me. And they were nasty. Anyway, uh, it's almost 8.30. We're going to finish this field, and then we'll see where we're at. We may call it a night after that. We've got 78 acres on the other side of the ditch over here that we can do. Um, but I don't really know where to go after that. All the rest of the fields had substantial amounts of replant or were completely replanted. And I think I want to wait for that replant corn to come up and at least be able to row it pretty well before I go in and side dress it. So... I don't know. We'll see. We do have enough anhydrous though, because I've got this tank that's full, I've got another big tank, and we've got four more small tanks. So really we've got enough to run almost all day tomorrow if we want it to. Had to turn my lights on because it's getting dark. I've got uh, four acres left, but I don't think I'm going to make it. We'll see. The low tank volume uh, warning came on. Guess we'll be hooking up to that tank yet. Close. Half of a full pass and a half width path past the whole width of the field. That's where I ran out. So we'll change tanks and keep moving. That is tank number nine for the day, I believe. And three of them, like that one, have been big tanks. So we've done a lot today. All right, well, I finished up over there light on so you can see me. I finished up on that other field and I jumped across the ditch and I started in this 78 acres here. Uh, I'm going to go until this tank is empty. Um, shouldn't, shouldn't take very long. 45 minutes or so. Um, this field is notorious for having big rocks in it, especially ones that are slightly buried and uh, seems like every time we're in here with the anhydrous bar side dressing corn we break a shank or two. So really hoping we can avoid that. I'm going to slow down just a little bit. Uh, hopefully that helps. And we'll see. If I break a shank tonight, I'm quitting. I ain't fixing it tonight. But uh, we'll see how far we can get. Well, the 
dust is getting in the way, but I believe that's what they were calling the uh, strawberry moon last night. I don't know. I guess it was full moon last night, not tonight, but still pretty impressive. All right, our tank is empty. I'm going to park the tractor and call it at night. We have, uh, what do we got? Five tanks that we can run off tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow's Sunday, so they're not open. We can't get any more, which is fine. Honestly, I was hoping that uh, we wouldn't get quite so many today because I was hoping to take tomorrow off, but uh, it's all right. It's a good thing we need to keep moving. We got to get this stuff done. So uh, five tanks will be enough to finish this field. And I did find or remember there's one other field that we can go and do that's about 30 acres. We might have enough to do that. I don't know. We might end up just a little bit short. Um, but that's the plan. So after doing nine today, five tomorrow won't seem like no big deal. But I do have church in the morning, so it'll be a noon start time, and uh, that's fine. We ended up doing almost 215 acres today, or a little bit more than that, actually. Uh, pretty good day for anhydrous. So I'm uh, real happy with that. We are almost a third done with the anhydrous. So uh, that's good, but we still got a long ways to go. The plan is to do anhydrous up here tomorrow. We'll finish this field, do that one more if we can or until we run out. And then we're going to drop the anhydrous bar, hook the corn planter back up. We'll see what time it is tomorrow. I doubt it will happen tomorrow night, but uh, probably Monday morning we're going to go and replant the rest of the corn that we need to do. And whatever we can get, we're going to get. If it's too wet, it's too wet. But tomorrow is June 7th. We're talking about the 8th. That's late enough. Time to get it done. And... Uh, uh, then we can unhook the corn planter again, hook the anhydrous bar back up, and Monday afternoon or Tuesday morning, wherever we're at, uh, we're going to head to our farms in Berkey and do the side dressing down there. So we've got about 280 acres of corn down there. It'll take us a day and a half, two days to do that, um, assuming they can get us anhydrous fast enough. And there's a chance of rain on Wednesday again, so we'd like to get done down there before that rain hits on Wednesday. So. Anyway, that's the plan for the next couple of days. I uh, hope you guys will still tag along and uh, watch the progress as we go. If you got questions or comments, uh, leave them down below for me. <sighs> Sorry for my little rant earlier on the anhydrous and the safety of it and stuff. I, I really want to portray that, you know, this, this stuff is not, we're not doing things that are harmful to you to the crops, to ourselves, to the food supply in any way, shape, or form, and, uh, you know, there's a reason behind everything, so please ask me the questions, I'll do my best to answer them, and, uh, yeah, hit the like and subscribe buttons for me, please, I would appreciate it very much, it's free, it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe to the channel, all it does is tell you when the, the videos are coming out, and if you hit that little bell, it'll notify you right on your phone, so, anyway, um, yeah, Thanks for watching. Have a great night, everybody. We'll see you again tomorrow.